Good morning, anyone. So this is a continuation of the new series, The Speaker Talent Search. Um, my guest today is Charlotte Allen, and we are going to be talking about business leadership, leading change, and the value of uniqueness. So again, Charlotte Allen, uh, author of uh, Rebel Success for Leaders. Charlotte, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Maureen. I'm really excited to be here with you today. It's wonderful to have you on. So we, 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 we came into this, we are co-authors. I mean, how fabulous is that? And, and, and we've actually, we've, we've known each other now for, for quite a while. You were probably one of my first interviews back when I first started. So I just, I always enjoy seeing you. So what have you been up to? How's Rebel Success for Leaders? And what's going on? Well, Maureen, we've been really busy. I, I, gosh, it's been, you're right. It has been a really, it's been a minute or two since we <laughs> talked the first time. Yeah. So Rebel Success for Leaders is absolutely doing a great job getting our message out there. So from the perspective of, you know, clients really hearing ab about what is uniqueness and how do you take that uniqueness of yours, combine it with the uniqueness of others and put that together on a team for success. Because we all know in business and in life, we usually are not doing things completely by ourselves, right? So we are, we are working with others. We are um, collaborating, which is how we drive innovation and how we drive change. But then we have to figure out how to work with these folks like ourselves who are so unique, who are so wonderfully um, you know, showing up with what they have to bring to the world. So that is, that's something I'm really passionate about. I'm passionate about helping groups and teams figure out how to, how to do that really, really well. You know, so we, and if you guys look back in, in the library, we have another interview with Charlotte when we first, but you know what I'm hearing for the first time Tell me. Is, is, so of course, when we're talking about the entrepreneur, right? And, and, or the business leader or, or a community leader, they have a vision. Yes. But you're talking about the vision for everyone in that room working in their collaborative. Yes. Yes. So, so what we've, what we found, and I don't think this is unique. Um, I think it's something that change statistics have demonstrated that change is really done best kind of as a, it's not a top down. It is not a top down. You know, when, when people say this is what we're going to do and they kind of like put it on you, if you will, whether it be that it comes from your CEO, your manager, your leader, you know, whoever it is, but it's sort of top down, it tends to be so much less effective. And even when you do it at, at a sort of a similar level, um, it can be challenged if we are not people focused so what we're finding in a lot of ways is that we have to work with folks to, to teach them how to, how to do that collaboration amongst each other. Because we also know that if people cannot bring themselves to work, if they cannot deliver their uniqueness to work, guess what? They're not engaged. They are not showing up. They're not plugging in. They're looking at the job boards to try and find another place to be. So the importance right now is to figure out how to allow them to bring that forward and how to teach the team, you know, to be very collaborative and work together within that. Okay. So we're talking business leadership, right? And that I know that is yours, the, the Fortune 500s and, and all of that. So business leadership and looking at that, and, and, and this can be applied outside of it, but Businesses tend to still be late to the the party, mm -hmm. and and then when when you are when you are talking about bringing forward everyone's uniqueness, first of all, where is the that? And I could understand from the the, the top saying, okay, that we're going to bring this, we're going to implement it. How do you begin when you're walking in there to tell the people there it's safe? It's safe to bring forward what your gift is. It's safe to, to, to be recognized and for that as it brings forward, because there is the satisfaction. But I would think that, that how, how do you even broach the subject? 
well, well, I tend, to, as you mentioned, in a business environment, um, there are certain norms, right? Let's call them that are accepted within a business environment. And I am usually brought in when a leader has a challenge with lack of success and change, you know, previous failures, previous um, changes that have gone through and then have been reverted back to prior. So they spent a lot of money and time to make a change and nobody, it doesn't stick. Everybody goes back to the way it was before or innovation, right? They ha- they need to drive that innovation in their organization and it's, and it's not happening. It gets stuck somewhere. Um, so those, those tend to be the reasons where they might reach out and, and engage with me. And what usually happens is I don't really come in very, how shall I say, well, let me give you the list of the things you need to do. Let me talk to you about, you know, what's going on. I tend to come in and, and do a bit of a survey and assessment. And usually what starts to happen is I start to see one of the many commonalities with change ineffectively, right? That people are just kind of pushing it. They're, they're following their timelines, their spreadsheets, their models, anything that has anything to do with data or their computers and nothing that has anything to do usually with the people, the people that's in the organization and the people that they are serving outside of the organization, whether they be clients, customers, partners, what have you. So usually how that works is that I, I tell, I I teach through story, right? So I teach through story and people have an idea of how they can identify with these stories. So when they hear the story, it tends to be a little less in their face, right? But they can find the commonalities. And then we start from an engagement. I do a lot of role play with folks. So I'm the, I'm usually the change affected person and they're themselves. That's easiest for them. And we do a lot of role play and we do some breakouts and we, we sort of ground them in change statistics and we really get them out of what the change is and really focus on why the change is happening. And I think they're all kind of stuck in the what, because that's what they are measured. Yeah. You know, that's what their day-to-day work is. Um, so, so it is, it is there absolutely, but <clears throat> usually not the thing I start with. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm, I keep hearing transformation, 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 and that the, and it's not always something that is, been infused in business. Tony Hayes, this is the same thing he was saying. The triangle is not this way. It's, I'm not yet to do that. The other way. That way. I think that's good, right? All right, all right. Um, And and the piece here, and I love the storytelling. So then, all right, let me ask you. So I'm, I'm, I'm just leaning in. I'm so curious. So you're telling a story, right, that they get to identify themselves in there in, in some one of the role. Give us just a, a sample of what that looks like. You want me to tell the story? Yes, I do. I'm so fascinated. <clears throat> okay. So yesterday I delivered a workshop and we were talking about how did you change better? And this was a group who they're about six weeks out from a go live for a business transformation. And this particular group is the group that is frontline, right? They're going to be the ones who are going to get all of the questions, all the problems. It's all coming to them. <clears throat> so we, I was, this is the third story in the, in the workshop that we had yesterday. And I, well, I'll tell the story and then I'll tell you what I was, um, what I was getting at from them. And, and mind you that this organization is within the banking field. Okay. So I tell them that when I was early on in my craft career, we had an opportunity to do volunteer service. So I volunteered with a colleague at a um, inner city uh, shelter or halfway house for men who had had gotten out of prison and who were living in this place for a period of time before then they would transition into you know regular population. And at this facility, they had an opportunity to get clothing, to practice their interview skills, um, learn how to you know reengage with life outside of prison. Um, They also had sort of their own quote unquote apartment. They had like a community kitchen. So it kind of was sort of stepping them slowly back into life, not behind bars. So we volunteered and I and a colleague were um, volunteering with interview practice. So some of these gentlemen had had some 
job interviews. And for the most part, it had not gone well. And some of them were um, just starting in the process. So our, our role was to help them, right, to help them figure out how to do that better. So we started 10 men sitting on chairs, we walk in, we ask them, tell us a little bit about your experiences, what's going well, you know, what challenges have you had? So they're each sort of talking through their experiences. And this one gentleman who was sitting off to the side, said absolutely nothing, he said absolutely nothing. And I, after we released them to go change into their suits, you know, their interview clothes, um, because they were coming back to, you know, do the actual engagement. He, I walked over to him and I said, his name was Bill. And I said, Bill, um, you didn't really have much to say. Is everything okay? And he said, this isn't going to work. This is just stupid. It's never going to work. And I said, well, why is it going to work, Bill? I think we're here to help and we'll work you through the challenges. And he said, little lady, it ain't going to work. <laughs> and I said, okay, tell me why. Why is it not going to work? And he said, you know, every time you have these, these meetings with people, when you get to the box, it's just done. And, and I said, what do you mean, Bill? It's, and let me tell you about Bill before I go any further. Bill, um, Bill is huge. Bill towers over me. Bill is massive. Bill is um, well uh, physically developed. I guess he spent a lot of time with the weights in. He's buff. He's buff. Yeah. He has a tattoo. He's, he's got a lot of art, body art, right? He also has this, this scar that kind of goes down by his throat. Bill is a humongous guy. So Bill is talking to me right from up here. He's and saying, you're not the smallest woman. I mean, you're, are you like five, six, five, eight? I'm five, eight. Yeah. So I'm, I'm yeah. average, average, right? So he is, he's huge, right? And he's like telling me, it's not going to work. Little lady, it's just stupid. When you get to the box, it's not going to work. And I said, okay, Bill, what box are you talking about? And he says, you know, that box you got to check that says you're a felon. And I, I'm like, you know, standing here with this very large convicted felon. And I'm like thinking very quickly on my feet, like what situation am I in? Are these other guys convicted felons too? <laughs> and then I was like, but he was right. I, yeah. And then I'm like, I never think about the box, right? Yeah. I never, that's a part of every job application that I just do not think about. Right. So I said, you're right. You're right, Bill. You you cannot lie. You cannot, you know, tell them an untruth, right? You have to check the box. Yeah. Okay. So let's check the box and move on. What happens next, Bill? And I said, how are we going to, you know, do this? Tell me about, if you can, give me some details about what happened and what you're going to do next when you want to, you know, move on with your life. Bill had been caught in a very... Uh, unfriendly situation. He was participant, but he did not, uh, how shall I say, commit the most egregious act in this um, event that he was in. But he was part of the group that got caught and he did spend his time um, for his, he paid his time. You know, he paid his time and it's time for him to finish. And, and I, when I asked him, what do you want to do? He's like, you know, little lady, all I want to do is come home from work. I want to sit on my porch on a chair and I want to have a beer, you know, and maybe, maybe some days, you know, I might go out. It'd be nice to, you know, have a family, maybe if that works out, but, but I don't need to do much. I just want to kind of like a regular life, you know, maybe a barbecue on Friday or something. And I said, okay, Bill, you know, how, how do you, what kind of work do you want? He said, you know, I might even want to come back here to the facility we were standing in. And I might want to help out these people because these people here, they're really good. And people like me, we're hurting. We need this. He was and I said, Bill, in the room. I said, Bill, this is great. I said, when we practice in a few minutes, that's how we want to have the conversation going. Right. So he came back. Everybody got dressed. We started doing all the interview pack practice. Um, Bill responded as we coached him to, right? So we worked through how he would present himself. And at the end, he came up to me as we were finishing. And again, big hawking guy. And this time he looked at me, he said, you know, little lady, you were the only one who cared. You were the only one who thought I could do this. And I said, Bill, of course you can do this, right? Of course you can. And 
he says, yeah, but you were the only one. And I just want to say, thank you. Literally with a tear in his eye, this big, huge hulking man. And I talk at the workshop about how we all do not know <clears throat> because these folks who are in these transformational things in business think they're going to affect, you know, their coworkers by a conversation, <clears throat> a particular client, a customer, a member based on one interaction. Bill represents the fact that one interaction can affect a number of people. So never, ever really think that your impact is small. Your impact by the actions that you take are massive. Okay. And Bill, Bill had a lot of fear. And in Bill's world, fear was loud, loud. So Bill needed to, um, under needed help toning that fear down. He needed help hearing, right? Because he needed to be heard. So when you're thinking about that from a customer client perspective, coworker perspective, collaboration perspective, understand that everybody comes with some level of fear um, and that they, they are sort of very much looking for someone to help them with that. So that's kind of how we, that's, that's, a, that's a story that I ended with. Thank you for asking me to tell it. I um, believe that we all need to have that route to impact, right? And we all think it needs to be one thing and it probably is happening. We're just not considering it. So I started this whole conversation with knowing that people are holding back, right? Because it's their job, it's their livelihood. What, who, how, how much of their uniqueness do they get to really stand in? Because oftentimes people have never ask them, what do you want? Who are you? What's your gift? Right. And that's how you do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful to see when it starts to seep in. It's wonderful to see how you plant a couple of seeds and the blooming just happens everywhere. Um, and it's also wonderful, I think, for me to see that the consistency across a bunch of different industries, um, I don't have to know their particular technical stuff, right? I don't have to do that because I change, change and leadership and uh, innovation have so many parallels. So uh, I'm loving all of this. So again, rebel success for leaders, Charlotte, what are you up to? How can people get in touch with you? And what does that look like when you come in and you transform, you flip the triangle over? Well, since you asked, I'm very excited because we, I'm working with a colleague of mine, Dr. Kasturi Henry, who I believe. Oh, 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 let's stop right there. Friend of the show, friend of ours. Mm -hmm. And isn't that the best? We get to say that. I adore Dr. Kasturi. And oh my God, another like, you know, big wig in the, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. another, check out the library. I have four interviews with Kaz. Yeah. Yes, my God, that you can't, you guys, what a team. Yeah, so so Cass and I are both in STEM fields. Between us, we have 50 years of, you know, professional experience. We're both doctors and we um, are working together on a program that we're getting ready to launch called LEAP, Transform with Purpose. And we are excited about that because we want to come at it similar to how she and I both talk about the work that we do. We want to make sure that the work that we do has a combination of your uniqueness, a business component, right? Because we all have some sort of work vocation that we need to get you know, done. So how do you transform yourself as well as transform your business world? They should not be separate. They can work together. And so this, um, this program, which is going to be 12 weeks is online. Um, we're launching it with a LinkedIn webinar in June on the 23rd and the 22nd. And then we will be kicking it off in July. So very excited about that. Um, it is so needed right now with where the general population is with the turmoil that's happened over the last few years with folks taking a re-examination of how they're spending their time and what they're doing with it. And are they really truly following their passions and their purpose? So that's what we're excited about. That's coming up really soon. And, and so by the way, 
let's do another part. I get to have both of you. We'll, we'll do another promo. Let's have another conversation about it. I'd be thrilled. So very specifically, because when people are watching this and this comes out, how, how, how are they registering? What's, and I'll have the link, but where do they go? So the, there's a uh, leap transform with purpose um, page on LinkedIn. Um, and you'll have the link for that. Um, they go there, they sign up for the webinar. The webinar will be available to share information as well as answer any questions. After the webinar, we will have a, a sign up page so that you can sign up for the course. It'll be really super simple, um, it's pretty straightforward. So we're really excited about bringing this together because we know folks tend to do this both in individual senses, but we're trying to make sure that we do it such that it makes it real to you. You bring your problem your challenge, your transformation, where do you want to go? You work on it on the course and your how you plug in and the people you connect with, that's kind of their community that, that sticks with you, that sticks with you even after the course is over. So, And again, this is years later in, in our community, starting with one and two. Okay, very, I want to be really specific here. Uh, Leap with Purpose. It's going to be a LinkedIn live, good. Yeah, say it again. Leap, transform with purpose. Oh, I left out transform. Leap, transform with purpose. It's going to be, did you say June 23rd, a LinkedIn yeah. webinar? 22nd and 23rd, we're having introductory webinars. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are, do they need to attend both sessions? No, one or the other, whatever works okay. best for them. So the link's going to be here because we're going to push this interview out. Really, we're going to push it to the front line so we can maximize this, get this going. Unbelievable. You have no idea the caliber of the two women that you get to have on this team. Um, so again, leave Transform with Purpose, June 22nd, 23rd on LinkedIn. Sign up. You will not be, and then you'll get to find out more about NC Starlet and, and, and Dr. Kaz. I, think, I, I can't wait. So glad to be, I, again, I will this. Um, yes, Go sign up. Leave Transform with Purpose, June 22nd, 23rd, LinkedIn. The link's below. All right, Charlotte, I will see you again soon. Thank you, my friends. Thank you, Maureen. It was very, very enjoyable being with you today.